Well, hello, YouTubers. Oh, and there's Brando. <laughs> so in case you don't know, <laughs> now you do. <laughs> That's Marlon Brando, my Frenchie, who is quite sensitive to um, sounds. And um, obviously he heard me and, and wasn't expecting that. You're okay. You're fine. <laughs> so this is kind of exciting. Um, I had a cup of coffee after 6 p.m. And guess who's wide awake? And so I thought, okay, well, you know what? I'm going to come on the YouTubes and do a bracelet because it's kind of funny. Sometimes um, I look at what I've made and I'll think to myself, my goodness, I don't have this color or I don't have that color. And I've really been wanting to use these beads. Um, these are a really pretty uh, fire polish. It's a, a like a pink vitriol. So it's so, so pretty. And I see that they, I do have somebody joining me. So another night owl. <laughs> So I thought it would be fun. Um, hey, listen, I'm Juliana. Sometimes I forget to introduce myself. And I am the inventor of the jewel loom, bead loom. That's what I have in my hand right here. And um, yeah, so I'm going to be using this and and show you how to make a, a beaded bracelet. And I wish I could see who that viewer is, but I don't see. Um, let's see, I do have the comments on. So you're, you're more than welcome to say hello. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to take the metal rod that comes with the jewel loom and insert that into the bottom hole and then bring this up and snap that rod right in. Okay. The next thing that I need to do is to actually warp the loom. And so I'm going to turn it around and I'm working with the loom, um, in this like straight up and down position. So this area right here is closest to my body, okay? And so then this top area would be furthest away. So I am loving this hemp. I've been working with the Hemtik hemp for quite a while now, but it is just so fun. This is a one um, millimeter. So it's a little bit thicker um, I like to use this thickness. I also enjoy the 0.5. It just depends on, on what I'm working with because I have a one whole bigger bead. I can get away with a thicker, um, hemp. So anyway, I see that there are people joining. And so this is kind of brave and exciting just to be going on live YouTube. Usually I'm streaming into Facebook and everywhere else, but, uh, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to go hang out on the YouTubes and see what comes up. <laughs> so what I need to do to get started, so you, you see that my loom is um, with the buttons face up to the ceiling, right? Face up. And I'm going to start by tying off right here. Now I've got some thread from an, another project that I didn't seem to cut off. So let's get rid of that. There we go. Always working on my loom. So Okay, so I need to attach this hemp to the bottom button. And so I'm just gonna make a loop. I like to get started by just helping it out and making it like that little loop, very simple. And then I'm gonna place that onto the back button. And as you can see, let me just bring this up a little bit here for you. I'm actually tying it so that the knot is facing the grooves that are facing me, okay? So I'm gonna pull that tight and I'll give it another, another knot here. And again, I just wanna make sure that that knot is in the middle of the button facing the grooves that are facing me, closest to my body. And I don't know, let's do a giggle. Let's do a third one. Perfect. Okay. So as you can see, I'm working from the spool. Sometimes if I know exactly how much yardage it'll take to warp, then I'll go ahead and pre-cut, but I'm just going to work from the spool. And my beads are going to be three across, so I'm going to need four warps. And with this particular bead, this is a six millimeter fire polish. And so 
I have to skip grooves, right, in order for that bead to fit in between the warps. So I'm just going to eyeball it, and it looks like one, two, three. Yep. Okay, well, we're going to go with that, and then I'm going to check it. Okay, so let's get back to where we were because I don't want to miss a step here. So I have the hemp in my right hand. This is my right hand, and I'm holding it. And I'm just going to let it lay on the grooves. And then I'm going to take the loom and flip it over. And then I'm keeping the tension. And I'm going to just eyeball it. I'm not going to be too worried about whether or not it's completely the same amount. I can see that it's pretty close. And then I'm going to flip it again, wrap it around that back button. I'm going to come up and I'm going to skip one, two, three grooves. And then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to do the same thing up here. And every time that I do this, I'm actually really holding nice and tight to um, the hemp. So one, two, three. Lay that down into the groove. Let's see. One, two, three. Yep. Flip that over. Wrap it around the back button. And let's count again. One, two, three. So I got to move this over just a little bit. Let's see if that's three. One, two, three. Yep. And then we're going to pull this down. Wrap it around, and every time I'm really, you know, I'm holding the tension because I don't want to lose the tension on the warps. So you can hear it, right? So one, two, three. Bring that back up, and now this is my fourth warp. Okay. And then we're going to flip it over. Wrap it around this back button a couple of times just to get it nice and snug in there and then I'm going to take the hemp and I just want to make sure because this bead is faceted let's just make sure before I go too far that it's definitely going to fit uh, we might have been able to let's see this is the cool thing like before you really tie off there we can scooch that over a little let's just see for giggles sometimes it's too big I'd rather squeeze it in there than not so I think that's pretty good perfect okay so I'm going to turn it around and now I need to secure this so I'm going to cut it take that tail and then just I bring it underneath all those warps. And I just need to secure it. And again, I really love working with the hemp because it's so easy to attach to the loom. Okay, and we'll do that again. I'm going to bring it up to the camera here in a second so you can see. bring that up here see so I'm just making sure that it's nice and tight perfect and of course I'm just gonna be eh, I think I'm going to tie these two guys together <laughs> better safe than sorry right awesome and then I'm just gonna trim them so that they're not in my way when I'm doing my beading okay fantastic now um, when you get done with your warps, you know, I could tell like this is really good warp, right? Um, usually when people lose the tension, they lose it on this first warp. So it'll kind of be a little droopy, but, um, just practice, you know, it, it all comes together. Now I need to take the metal rod out so that the loom will expand more and then the warps will be even more taut. So I'm going to take my pointer and I just lay it, this, this is my pointer, I lay that on top of the top grooves and then 
I'm just going to bring the rod out. Now, if the rod won't come out on its own, the other thing is I tend to use my belly. So hold on. <laughs> Let me see. Nope. Okay. So I turn it around and we're going to try it this way just to see if the tension will be a little different. And it is perfect. So if that ever happens to you, just do that little trick where you turn the loom until the rod pops out. Um, remember that the loom is a flexible plastic, not a bendable plastic. So you want to be really conscious of that. All right. Fantastic. So I'm going to turn it back around nice and get it, make sure it's in the camera here and good. Now to anchor, I've already got my um, needle threaded with some wildfire. I'm using the gray. It's really pretty. I'll show you the spool. You might be able to see the color a little bit better on the spool here. It's really a nice gray, really pretty. And it's Beetalon's uh, wildfire. So I am going to anchor my thread just by going under, over, under. And I'm starting on the left side here of the loom. I'm going to get this out of the way. And I want to, um, I want to start about two inches down from the top. So with my wrist size I have a six inch wrist six um, and I want that to be centered on the loom so that I have equal amounts of warp on the top and the bottom so that when we're done I can um, have enough to tie and you'll understand better when I get to that point okay so I'm over here on the right I'm going to come under over under over okay you certainly could tie to that very first warp if you want. Kind of start a different way just depending on what I'm doing. Um, but this is fine. Okay, so good. All right, so now, so exciting. <gasps> Hi, I know, I drank coffee after six o'clock, so I'm awake. <laughs> anyway. So I have the needle and thread and it's in my left hand. And again, the loom is in front of my body. All right. Um, pointing this direction is closest to my body and up in this area is furthest. All right. So I'm going to take the needle and thread and I'm coming under the warps and I transfer the needle to my right hand. And then I'm going to pick up three beads. I know it's you, Christy. I see you. That's so awesome. And then I'm just going to let those fall so you can see how they're just, they're hanging, you know, they're just dangling underneath the warps there. And then I'm going to help guide them up and in between those warp threads. And let me bring that up to the camera a little bit closer. Okay, so I'm just letting them rest on my pointer finger. And then I'm going to take the needle and thread and I'm going back through the holes and I'm on top of the warps and I'm going to let you see how the needle and you see the shiny part of the needle. So I'm going through the holes and I'm on top of the warps. Okay. And now I'm going to pull the needle all the way out. And I just like to guide the thread because, um, it's just better to like have control, right? Because you don't want to get knots or anything like that. Now, with the first row and the last row, what I do is, and again, only on the first row and then again on the last row, what I'll do to really anchor the, those rows to the warps is I'll come back. So again, here's here's the top of the thread because we just came out on top of the warps, right? The needle and thread are in my left hand and I'm going to pass the needle under the warp, hopefully, <laughs> because it's really dark and back through all those buttons and I'm going under the warp 
and awesome thank you <laughs> all the way out and this is just like really securing that first row to the warp so that it doesn't move when we're all done okay so now my needle and thread are over here on the right side and yeah you can see like that is not really going to go anywhere and i'm going to come back through the top row okay and then pull through and when i get this all the way out okay so see how that doesn't want to go anywhere oh i got uh, something here that popped up let me get rid of that yeah so see that's really nice and secure so it's you know just a little added protection um because this is the very last row or the very first row and the very last row i like to make sure that they're really um nice and tight onto the um onto the warps okay so now we're back left hand under the warps with the needle and the thread And I'm going to pick up three of these gorgeous beads. Let them fall. Oops. Help guide them up and in between the warps. And then I'm taking the needle and the thread and going back through. Okay, and you'll kind of see that at the end each time I give it just a nice little tug and the reason why Let's see if I can if I can show this but do you see? Do you see the wildfire? Whoopsie. Do you see the wildfire here on the ends if we don't pull enough sometimes what happens is that there'll be like this little Excess right and so then you'll be bummed in the end because you'll have like, you know, these threads that are kind of not pulled tight enough. So I just do like a, a nice little tug, but never to the point where I distort the figure of the bracelet. So again, I'm going to come under the warps, transfer it to my right hand. Pick up three beads. Let that drop. Help guide them up into and pay attention to how I hold my loom. You know, sometimes people will say, Oh, it moves everywhere. So it's lightweight. I mean, what does it weigh? A couple ounces, maybe? It's made out of a shiny plastic. <laughs> it's never going to just, you know, completely stay still on its own. So you want to work with a jewel loom on a bead mat. You could use a silicone mat, you know, something that's non-skid um, will help. But do you see how I, I put my hand onto the loom here? So I'm really putting the weight of my hand on the loom on its bottom. And that helps to keep it secure and stable. And then I transfer over to the right hand here. So pay attention um, to how I do that because it really does help to control the um, the loom and to keep it in a spot in its in its place to keep the loom in its place. I've also done um, you know double sided uh, painters uh, tape. And that, you know, that will help. But if you could just learn how to, you know, see, once again, the, the weight of my hand is on the loom here. And then I'm going to go through the holes. And we're just repeating the same step over and over. Now, as I mentioned, I have a six inch wrist. Um, I've got three strands of fire polished beads, uh, 25 each. So I'm doing 25 rows. And the rule of thumb for the most part is that the closure, depending on what you're doing, I'm going to be adding a wood bead, will add about an inch to an inch and a half. And then it just depends too, like how you like to wear your bracelets. 
you know, do you like them really tight? Do you like them a little loose? But hopefully you can see that once you get your groove, you can make these bracelets very quickly. The original name of this concept um, was the awareness cuff bracelet. And I did it in a really pretty um, turquoise bead. And of course you can mix up the colors if you wanted. But sometimes, you know, it's just fun to have a nice um, palette of one color. And this bead is just so gorgeous. I just want to show it off. No, it's not, Christy. This is just six millimeter fire polish beads. And um, it it mimics the awareness cuff, cuff um, whoopsie, bracelet. I've been wanting to make this for myself for a while now and um, seeing how I'm like caffeined out right now, I was like, I'm gonna do this and do a special live in the, for the YouTube channel because Usually, I'm also sharing to the Facebook page. And then you might also notice how I'm like constantly like adjusting and just making sure that, you know, the rows are all nice and, and straight. But look at how beautiful this is already. Okay, so let's keep going. So once again, I'm coming under the warps, transferring it to my right hand and picking up three beads letting those fall helping to guide them up and in between the warps and okay do you see right here let me point this out so every once in a while there we go got a little bit of a delay so i got to get the camera there we go okay so every once in a while you see how it's kind of the needles kind of going in at an angle there. If your bead, how do I say this? Um, don't fight it. You know what I mean? If it feels like this is the angle that's going to um, best take the needle, then just, just do that, right? And then you can adjust it after you pull your thread through. So then see how I do that. And then I just make sure that everything is nice and tight. And that happens every once in a while, especially with this thicker hemp. With the, um, so you have a thicker hemp and you have a faceted bead, right? So you have like these two things going on. But if you just follow the flow of the bead and then adjust it afterwards, it works out. I mean, you've been watching me do it and, and it's all good. Oh, this is so, now, I, now I'm like, okay, well, what am I gonna wear with this? <laughs> That's the fun part. I do have like this really cool, like long, um, oh, what would you call it? Like a I guess like a duster, but it's super lightweight. I call it like my Stevie Nicks uh, jacket. And it's a really pretty color, um, like a burgundy. I bet it would look really pretty with this. Yeah, so once you get the hang of it, once you get your your loom all set up and everything, you know, you could almost make, you definitely can make these under an, you know, under an hour, like for sure. You know, looming can be, um, you know, depending on what you're making, you know, you could definitely do um, little pieces in 30 minutes. In fact, uh, one of my team members and I, we were talking about 
some special things for the YouTube channel. And I was thinking about doing um, little jewel swatches, you know, like little patches. And then, um, you know, just coming up with something so that you could uh, make something a little quicker. But yeah, you know, they could be, you know, projects can be anywhere from, well, like a pair of earrings. You could do a pair of earrings quite quickly under 30 minutes. Um, you could do a little pendant, you know, and I have some projects that I personally do, um, that take many hours, but it, they're, you know, there's a lot, a lot to it. Oh yeah. Ooh, a tie dyed per, uh, dress would be hot. Yeah. That'd be really cool actually. Yeah. This pink vitriol bead is like one of my favorites. Anytime I see the vitriol, um, on a bead, I usually lose it and have to buy it. <laughs> it's just so pretty. And it's just this particular, um, idea, this particular pattern, if you want to call it style, it's also so calming to make, you know, cause the bead is big, which means the hole is big and you're not struggling to find the hole. <laughs> like if you were doing something with a, an 11 O or a 15 O. Um, and so it's just, you know, it's easy. It's calming. It's meditative. And it goes quick. Look how quick this is going. <laughs> okay. So I only got a few more rows. Super pretty. See, it gets quiet. <laughs> it gets quiet. This is the part where, you know, I miss teaching um, in person because obviously, you know, you have a group of women and men um, at times who come into the classroom and they're full of all this energy and everyone is talking and, and as a teacher, you're trying to get everybody settled and then finally everybody gets settled and you get them going and then, and then all of a sudden it's like quiet because they're like, they got into it. They chilled out. <laughs> it's quite cool to watch. Mm, this is just so pretty. I've only got two more rows. See how quickly this goes. Great project for like if you're um, if you're traveling and you want to take something with you, you know, you could just pick up a bunch of uh, fire polish beads and um, some beading thread, some you know beading cord. Again, I I love hemp. I love working with the hemp, especially the hemp teak hemp because it's, um, you know, it's a sustainable hemp. Um, it's, they've got like some, oh gosh, I wish I could remember the, I, the package is way over there, but just the way that it's, you know, created and everything. Hemp Teak is a, is a great company out of the San Diego, California area. And, um, they're quite conscious of what they do. So, okay. Look at that last row. Woo. Okay. So yeah. So you see, like I didn't, I didn't get it quite centered, but I'm not like totally off. Um, I could have come down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I'll have enough on each end to, uh, to tie. So again, what I want to do with that last row is I want to take the needle and come under the warp 
and back through the holes. Whoops. I want to be under the warp. <laughs> Pull that out. By the way, and it's happening right now, if for any reason your needle feels a little tight, grab your flat nose and pull versus your hand. Somehow the pressure is more evenly um, dispersed and, and so it's it just makes it easier. It's these little things. And then I'm coming back through the holes on the top. Perfect. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to um, tie off. So I'm going to come, let's see, is that what I wanna do? Mm. I wanna hide the, the knot here. I mean, I could certainly tie off on the side. There are some tools, some um, knot burners, things like that. Everybody has an opinion about what to do, you know, with your with your threads. And I just say you should do what you want to do, what you're most comfortable doing, okay? And um, and that's all I have to really say about that. <laughs> so let's see. I'm going to come back through here and. And then I'm going to take, and I'm going to take the needle and I'm going to come under the warp here. And I'm just trying to hide the knot. And so I got to come through the back here. And this way the knot is on the middle warp. And then I'll take the needle and I'll push it down so that the knot goes to the back of the project of the bracelet. It'll pull itself down. Okay. Fantastic. And I'm going to go ahead and turn, turn this over and very carefully because it's, I want to make sure I don't, um, I'm just going to very carefully cut that <laughs> as the crowd goes, oh, and then I'm going to turn it around and okay. So this is important when you're taking your project off of the loom, what I like to do is like sandwich the beaded part in my hand, right? And then I'm holding the loom at the same time because I don't want these beautiful glass beads to, um, you know, slam down onto the table and, you know, crack somehow. I'm just, you know, and you, and you don't want the loom when it, when it gets loose to like pop up or whatever. So it's just, it's just the way I do it and I find, and this is, it's the way I teach and I feel like it's um, just a comfortable, easy way to do it. So again, I'm laying beads in my hand and then I'm just wrapping the rest of my hand around the loom, okay? And then I'm gonna grab um, the scissors here. See how that pops? <laughs> and then we'll take that off. And I'm gonna lay this down. So I like to, um, I'll take the two warps and I'm just gonna make one of these knots here. Okay, and I'm just trying to get that knot as close to the bead. I'm gonna pull in this extra needle here just to help pull this down a little. And I'm just trying to really be conscious of getting it, you know. Okay, I want it a little closer, so I'm just going to back out a little bit here. And try to get that a little more close to the bottom. There we go. And, you know, just be patient when you're doing these things. Don't try to go too fast. And then I'll want to do this side so that it matches up. And again, I'm just going to guide that. Okay, awesome. 
and then you know like I'll just pull one end and then the other end and you see how I'm 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 holding you know the knot and I'm just really guiding that process okay so cool all right now I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna want to cut those and then I'm gonna do the same thing on the opposite end And again, I just want that knot to be, you know, close to the, yeah, close to the beads there. And I'll just pull just ever so carefully and slightly there. I don't, the thing that you need to remember, okay, is that as we're doing this, right, your warps are going up and down. So if I'm really tugging at these and I'm not conscious of what I'm doing, you could, you know, the warp could slip and it could, it could, um, gosh, I, I've had sadly where I've like pulled the warp too far and, uh, yeah. So you just, you just want to like, you know, be one with your piece. <laughs> Don't be in a rush. In other words, just kind of, you know, be conscious of what's happening. It's such a beautiful process. Okay. So again, I'm just going to take that knot and I just like to pull carefully. Perfect. Okay. So now we have both ends tied. Um, and I need a loop at one end and then the button at the other end. And I feel like I'm going to do the button on this end, I think. Let's see. So I have a little more um, wiggle room down here. So I'm going to take those two ends. So I just have a big black button. I might change this out um, to one of the wood buttons, but um, the Baltic birch wood, this is wood, but another button. We'll see. Um, actually, I like the pink and the black. That's pretty cool. Okay, so yeah, I should have enough here, and I'm just going to make a knot. I'm gonna make a couple knots. I probably with this piece because I feel like it might need it because these are short. So you could see now why it's important to. Um, to center right to center your piece because you want as long of warps as you can so sometimes what i'll do is i'll just kind of see how i feel about the end knots and then if anything what i can do let me come up closer here okay if anything, what I'll do is I'll take some um, coordinating wire, like some really pretty pink artistic wire, and I'll wrap it around the excess here just to make sure that it's in, it's, you know. I could also use a dab of white glue that dries clear, you know, like some Lean's Turbo Tacky. Okay, so there's that end. Now what we have to do with the other end is we have to create the loop for the button to go through. So basically what I do is I kind of eyeball it, right? So I just made like, like a little loop there. And the idea is that I've got to get, you know, that button through the loop. And I'm going to get rid of this excess thread because it was driving me crazy. Okay, so so what I'll do is I'll just do another one, but I'm not going to pull it really tight because I want to make sure it's correct. So let me stretch that out a hair. And then Okay, so then I'll come back down. I could tell that it was pretty okay, but I'm going to give it a, just a little bit more of a wide opening. Okay. 
And I'm going to do another one here. And again, if I feel that it's necessary, you know, I can, I can use some, a little glue to secure the knots, or I could get some artistic wire and, and wrap it around, you know, whatever. But what I don't do is I never trim my tails until I'm like totally sure that I've done it right with my sizing. So that is one thing. Don't cut your tails off. <laughs> don't trim the hemp if you don't know for sure. So let's see what we got going on here. Oh, so adorable. Look at this. Less than an hour. Set it at, oh my gosh, perfect. Awesome. Yeah, so I, I'll want to go back and just kind of clean this up a little. I mean, it's fun and funky and it's kind of got that boho vibe. And even for giggles, I guess I could, you know, if I had some other beads, I could string them on here. You know, that could be cool too. But look at, isn't that great? Just like that. So you've got a beaded bracelet in less than an hour. Actually, yeah, because I went live at 10.15 and um, it's 10.56. Wow, so like 45 minutes to set up the loom and um, and to make a bracelet. And it's gorgeous, you guys, look at it. It's beautiful, fire polished beads, some hemp, a nice wood um, you know, button there that I used. I hope you've been inspired by this. I'm so glad that I drank coffee late in the day. <laughs> I normally don't do that. <laughs> uh, isn't this great? Oh my goodness. I am so happy. I'm just so excited. I can't wait to get to um, know all of you YouTubers better. And I'm really looking forward to doing more on the channel. It's going to be a lot of fun. This is the pink... Um, the pink hemp. Yeah, Christy, it's a pink hemp. Isn't it pretty? Here's the, here's the big spool that I was working from. Um, but the packages have six yards on them. So yeah. Yeah. So, um, gosh, I'm so happy to get to know you and you can go to jewelloom.com if you want to get yourself a loom. Um, the, well, I mean, you have this tutorial right here to help you along the way. I've also got an amazing subscription program that you can check out. Um, that's super great. Christy's in that. And so we have a lot of fun every month. I design a project just for my subscribers. Um, and this month I actually designed a brand new loom. Yep. I am like the mother of birth and looms. <laughs> but I love it and it's so much fun. And um, there's also a weekly kit that I've been doing called Beads in a Bag and that feeds into the YouTube channel as well. So all kinds of wonderful things and I'm so excited. And I'm sure if you're here, I'm assuming that, that you um, hopefully like the channel. You know, you're supposed to do all the things, right? Subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff, right? I don't have it all down yet, but whatever you would like to do, I would be so grateful for. And yeah, that's it. So thank you. Thank you for spending this time with me. I'm super stoked that we were able to, to actually make a bracelet in like 45 minutes. It's awesome. Okay. <laughs> And this is the kind of, this is the kind of service that I love. I love providing, being able to, um, help my, my, um, subscribers. We do a lot of like private shopping stuff. And so, oh, hi, Pam. You've been watching since the day of the leans. Oh my gosh. That is so cool. So for those of you that, um, may not know my background, I've actually been in the creative industries for, for quite a while, I started off with Aline Jackson, the inventor of Aline's uh, Tacky Glue. And um, back in the day, Aline's Creative Living was the number one rated um, TV show with women uh, throughout the United States and Canada. I think at that time we were in almost 100 million households throughout the US and Canada. And so I, you know, it's where I learned how to bead with um, Aline's daughter, Tiffany. And, um, and so I knew that one day I wanted to have my own bead loom. And so here we are. <laughs> so in 20, 
was it 2012? I presented it, I believe, to Beadalon and we became partners. Um, it's my intellectual property. I do have the U.S. patent on the loom. It's kind of a cool thing to be able to say. I never realized how cool it was until somebody said, do you realize you'll always be a, um, a part of history? You'll, you know, you're, you're in a book, right? You have a number. And um, so that's pretty cool. And, and I didn't realize how cool it was until somebody said that. And I was like, oh, duh. <laughs> <You know? laughs> silly girl. But yes. Yeah. So Pam, thank you. Thank you. I'm still, um, Tiffany and I see each other all the time. And, you know, sadly, of course, um, I guess it's been a few years now, Aline, you know, passed away, but man, she was just, she taught me a lot. She really did. And I have so much to be grateful um, to her. But um, yeah, so gosh, you guys, this has been really fun. I'm, I'm so, um, I feel so excited to be doing this and it's about time. <laughs> it's kind of, I don't know why I was kind of I, shy about the whole YouTube's thing. And, and uh, I don't know why, not shy, but you know, it's just a, another platform and you, you want to get to know it and it seems so complicated and yet it's so easy. And here we are, you know, beating together at a 11 o'clock California time and, and whatever time it is across, what is it like one in the morning on the East coast? <laughs> and Christy, I know you're here. I don't know where you're at, Pam, but I'm so grateful that you found um, the channel. Thank you. Spread the love and, um, yeah, we get some more subscribers and I will definitely keep doing this. I'm really super excited about um, the little jewel swatches. I think that's going to be a fun, cool thing that I just do for the YouTubes. Yeah. So, okay. I'm going to let you go because I don't know. I don't, I still don't feel very tired, but <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'll be back with another bracelet, <laughs> but yeah, check it out. So excited super stoked that we got this done under 45 minutes. That's, that's impressive. I hope you find that impressive too. And, and you could see how easy it is to get started with the jewel loom. It really is like just the most super friendly, um, bean loom. So, all right, you take care and I will definitely see you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. I will check that out. Awesome. Okay. Bye. Good night.